Hello, sweet summer children. I have a special guest here with me today, and we're going to be talking about the old gods and the children of the forest. What's up, smoke screen? Hello, hello, gray area. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. This is the gifts of the old gods. We want to talk about the weirwood trees, the green seers, the dire wolves we're going to talk about, and some stark fates. Yes, yes. So I think we have a two-parter here, uh, right? I think we're, we're going to do this on, on your channel and part two will be on my channel. Yes. So we'll, we'll go through the whole plethora of, uh, of old god, werewood, dire wolf, and the fate of the Starks and all that good stuff and how they all tie together. Maybe with the end game too, wrapped in there a little bit. Yeah, all of that wrapped up in one gift for the sweet summer children Do you, and the proto Starks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Uh, drink up everybody if you've uh, watched my channel you know that's a drinking game <laughs> so i'll leave um all of chris's links in the description box and i think we're going to be uploading at the same time so you won't have to wait you can go directly from this video onto his video yep okay so let's get into it so we hear about the weirwoods very 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 early in both the books and the tv show the weirwood trees have always fascinated me. I actually think they're kind of like demon trees. <laughs> but what do you think about the weirwoods? Like, what's your take on them? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I don't completely disagree, actually. I, I wouldn't call them demons necessarily. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> no, I do think that they're almost an entity of their own, in a sense. I, I think that um, we get a lot of information, a lot of clues that they're fed by blood. Um, I think that is the source of magic in this uh, in this world, at least in Westeros. And yeah. um, there's definitely they're definitely tied to the Starks and you know, grow green seers, proto Starks, etc. <laughs> uh, in the sense of um, you know them providing the power to um, you know because it, it goes into the old gods, obviously, and and gods in general. And I don't think there are gods in, in the story. I think werewoods um, are a big part of that. So you don't think there's any gods at all i don't i don't i think um i've always said that i think because we pretty much hear about the old gods uh and werewoods and even jojen pretty much tells us when he talks to bran and bran seven that the gods some even the children some believe that the chil the, the trees were the gods um but i think we got a big uh you know for me anyway a big clue was when melisandre her, her chapter in dance with dragons and she sees blood raven and bran right she sees you know the boy with the wolf's head leans back and howls and the and blade and blood raven and all that good stuff and she associates those two with the champion of the great other and we know as readers right or, or show watchers that the the great other is simply what she sees essentially is blood raven and brand just regular people that have these, these kind of magical abilities through the trees yeah so in that sense she's aligning those two with the great other so therefore, if you know the great other who she aligns them with are just Blood Raven and Bran, you kind of got to, you know, come up with the idea that yeah, maybe there's not a relore either. You know what I mean? So I see what you're saying. However, I do think that if any gods are real, if there's any gods or any high, well, when you say gods, I just think of like a higher power. So if I if any of them are real, I kind of think that it would be the weirwoods because they're just so ancient and old. And they yeah, yeah. I mean, in the sense of and I, and again, I don't think we'll ever get a definitive answer from from George and the books on this or yeah, the show. No, yeah. <laughs> no and, we and won't. Then, yeah, we'll never get a definitive answer. So this is all just speculation and 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 just having fun talking about it. But yeah, I think essentially you're right in the sense of yeah, they provide the power, but essentially it's just another species and they kind of we kind of label it magic but there's you know we'll never get into the the how and why they work just we just kind of have clues there like i was talking about the blood yeah um, seems blood, to feed them blood sacrifice seems to be a part of all of the magic that's in westeros or essos everywhere it's all blood and fire um, absolutely even the weirwoods their magic seems to be blood and fire because they call dragon glass frozen fire so you have dragon glass and blood or frozen fire and blood and then you have for relore what you see melisandre do is she's burning people alive so that's fire and blood and we know the targaryens use fire and blood for their magic so it's all fire and blood and it all seems to be connected to one higher thing 
Right. I agree. I think, and I think that may, and that goes into my end game theory. We may talk about that later, but it, that the werewoods may be the source of that. There may be a source, but yeah, yeah. we definitely know that there are, we have so many hints of that, that they're fed by blood. Um, you have obviously one is the, the classic scene with Ned cleaning ice under the werewood tree after an execution. You have uh, blood Raven's cave littered with bones that brand notices. You have the Jojen pace potentially, um, you know, the, the vision, one of the first visions that Brand has in the books, so it's not in the show, but he sees the Weirwood at Winterfell and he sees it shrinking. So that's indicating he's going back in time. Definitely. And then finally, and, yeah, and then he finally sees the guy come up, or the lady, I'm sorry, come up with a bronze a bronze sword, which is telling you that's the, the first man giving a sacrifice in front of, because you see somebody kneel down in front of where the tree is, the small tree at this point. Yeah. And uh, they're going to sacrifice this person to the Weirwood. So definitely tells you they're powered by blood. And uh, it started making me wonder too. And that's a whole different, uh, I guess, uh, a different um, video. But it makes me wonder about the rise of magic, and maybe that's tied into Robert's Rebellion and all that good stuff. Who knows? A lot of a lot of ways that. Can go. <laughs> yeah, but but you know that um, the breaking of the arm of Dorne or the flooding, the the hammer of the waters. It's said in a world of ice and fire that they gathered in their hundreds the children gathered in their hundreds on the isle of faces and did this grisly sacrifice some people say that they they sacrificed like a thousand captive men and like another version that's even darker is that they actually sacrificed their own young like their own kids to the weirwood to feed it to to have enough power to call down the hammer of the waters yeah, there's definitely, definitely sacrifice is a big thing here in uh, Valamar Ghoulish, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's why I said they're demons. Yeah, that is, well, yeah, that's true then. I mean, yeah, if there's anybody that's sacrificing people, yeah, I agree. Um, but I think that goes back to just as a quick little parallel, I think, like you mentioned, fire and blood. I, I, I've always said that's the recipe for Valyrian steel as well. Uh, I almost tied into Nisa Nisa, but anyway, that's a whole different thing. We'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll stay on, we'll stay in the north. We'll stay in the north. In the north, when we, um, when we hear about the weirwoods, it seems like there's conflicting stories because Catelyn says that all the weirwoods in the south are gone and they've all been cut down. But we know that that's kind of not the case. There are still weirwoods in the south, um, in the Riverlands, of course. And then there's some at um, there's one at the Citadel and there's one at Casterly Rock. Yeah, they're they're definitely making a comeback for sure. I, and we were talking about this before we when we were talking about doing this. I was saying I always go back to the one that stands out for me is the the Brienne chapter in A Feast for Crows. Uh, I think it was I said it was Brienne Brienne six. Um, you know she's she, it, you know he, he could have made this is when he she's looking for Sansa and all that stuff and, and ran into uh, Randall Tarley and all that. And basically, he has a couple people follow her um, just in case she does find Sansa because he's interested in to, to see what the outcome of that is. And she, she gets in a fight and kills these people, ends up killing three dudes essentially. But, you know, George R. R. Martin didn't have to point out that there was a werewood there, but he did. Yeah. He, and, she, and he pointed out specifically to bury them under the werewood tree. He had, she had this guy dig a grave under the werewood tree specifically. So we know they're making a comeback, maybe, maybe in uh, relation to the rise of magic again. Yeah, and also like when weirwoods are cut down, if the stump still exists, I feel like that stump still has access to the weirwood net because Jamie gets that full-fledged weirwood dream and it's it's no tree there, it's just the stump. It's just a weirwood stump. Yeah, I agree. And I think even I'm even questioning if something is cut down does it still have some kind of magical ability? Because it said that weirwoods never rot, right? Yeah, they petrify. They, they, yeah, they turn into stone. So, but you also have, you know, we were talking about before too with Arya. She's over in Bravos, right? Having wolf dreams from that distance away from Nymeria, wherever she is. Yeah. And there's a there's of course the House of Black and White that has one weirwood door along with an ebony door. You have um, the moon door uh, at the Eyrie is made from weirwood. You have the weirwood throne there, and you have Sweet Robin having all these crazy voices and shit. So uh, anywhere, <laughs> the, anywhere there's a damn weirwood, what I'm saying is there's a bunch of crazy shit going on. Yeah, like Harrenhal is cursed. It's cursed, and Harrenhal is made of so much weirwood. 
Right, right. And another uh, thing I thought about as far as an example of that is of maybe, I mean, in the show, you kind of had Bran still in the vision when he was being pulled by Mira on the sled. I was mm -hmm. thinking, is that a weirwood sled that still kind of works for him? You know, does he have to touch an actual tree that's that's rooted? Yeah, because he's not touching anything and he's right. having like this, this like he's downloading everything ever in Westeros. And he's yeah, not absolutely. touching anything. And, so and he's not touching anything. So it and, could be, it could still work essentially for a, at least for a while when it's actually cut down. And you have the old, uh, the other example I thought of just to throw this out there was you and, and the brand visions again. You see Brand seeing a guy carve three weirwood arrows, which was, I was just, I was oh, just was that about this. I was just yeah, about to okay. say Yeah, okay. So we're on the same page. We're on the same page. <laughs> but because Blood Raven, right? When you um, hear about how he killed Damon Blackfire, yes. He has, he's using a weirwood bow and weirwood arrows. And he's like three football fields away from him. And he just, he's killed, he's just hit, he hits his sons first and then him. And he's like so far away. And the guy in the Tales of Duncan Egg says that these arrows were guided with sorcery. And they just happened to be yeah, they wood probably arrows. literally were. I have no doubt. And yeah, that's a, another great example. Um, the one I'm talking about was uh, potentially Brandon Snow. Uh, that's not a, you know 100 sure, but Brandon Snow was a half brother of Torrin Stark, and, uh, mm -hmm. and that's the that's the king who nailed for for during Aegon's conquest. If anybody are not, is not aware of which Stark we're talking about, but um, he had offered to go and sneak into camp and kill Aegon the Conqueror's dragon. So he was carving three weirwood arrows. So it makes you think it can be used as a weapon too because it makes you wonder do weirwoods really burn that easy because dragons you feel like if you hit them with something and it's just regular wood they're fire made flesh so that could just burn right through them like when ramsey burns winterfell the weirwoods fine that is true <laughs> that is that is true yeah so they may have some kind of fire resistance because the first men weren't just burning them. They were cutting them down. Right. And Melis now I, well, I know they do burn, I guess well, we really didn't get the details on it, but we have Melisandre actually having wildlings burn weirwood branches. Yeah. So but I yeah. Wonder, but it, wonder, it didn't go into detail about how that worked, you know? Yeah. I, mean? I wonder if she was using magic to aid that. That's true. And she even told Stannis to, to burn the one at Storm's End. So, uh, but we, again, no more details about what it looked like afterwards. I think it, well, maybe that one did describe it as like black and smoldering or something. Hmm. Maybe. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> the, I think the, one of the questions that I get asked a lot is about Bran being a green seer and what an actual green seer is and what's the difference between a green seer and a skin changer? What's the difference between a skin changer and a warg? So what's the difference between a warg and a skin changer? Yeah, essentially a skin changer is somebody with the ability to to go into to other to animals, right? To slip into their skins. But a warg specifically is somebody who can go into a canine uh, and more than likely a wolf. Um, so that's really the difference as far as the Song of Ice and Fire goes is, is as far as so technically Bran is a like all the Stark kids in the books are wargs, but they're not all skin changers. Only Bran is really a skin changer. Maybe Arya. Maybe Arya. That's true. Because she does, uh, I guess, technically a cat, right? So yeah, <laughs> I guess that's a, not a, that is a feline. <laughs> <laughs> so Lion um, Beth wargs a cat. That's right. Yes, she does. She's to me, in my opinion, Arya is the most powerful warg out of all of them, out of Br even Bran. She could very well be. But yeah, that's the thing. What are the rules of, of this magic? We don't really know. Is it is it distance? Is it, you know, line of sight? You know what I mean? That's that's what it, where it seems to be a little different with Arya and Bran. Yeah, it definitely is. So Bran is a green seer. The, the thing that bothers me the most about Bran being a green seer is he does not have the traits of a green seer. I was going At to all. mention that. We are definitely on the same page here. That was my <laughs> next thought. Why has he not marked with red eyes or green eyes? Yeah, he doesn't have red eyes or green eyes. He's not sickly. Um, green seers, usually, they have ailments. I, don't, I mean, I get maybe because his, his legs are are not usable. Maybe that's an ailment. But Jojen seems to fit the bill more than Bran. 
Right, right. Yeah, it is typically, and I think Joe's even tells Brand that typically people marked with the gift, you know, have shorter lives or they have something going on. Obviously, Joe's yeah. has seizures. Um, and so they, they typically have, so that makes me wonder if it was necessary for Brand to be crippled, you know, and, and Blood Raven somehow influenced that. I don't know. Uh, just, just a thought. Yeah, that's possible because maybe Blood Raven wasn't full on green seer until he lost his eye maybe he had to Could lose be. his eye for something i'm not sure how how that works because it seems like blood raven had magical abilities way before he lost his eye way before he left um king's landing oh they no heard. doubt uh, yeah i mean you know half the stories are probably bullshit and they made him out to be an evil guy with sorcery but i think half of them are also true he was probably using sorcery and uh he probably had the sight he probably had probably visions and you know i'm sure he was recruited so i think he probably had dreams that were sent to him and stuff and probably he didn't probably know what was going on at, the, at first either but uh yes yeah, referenced a lot with as far as the the black fire rebellions and how he ruled his hand of the king and all that is brendan rivers right so in order to be a green seer you have to be a skin changer but it says only one man in a thousand is born a skin changer and only one skin changer in a thousand can be a green seer. Right. So being a green seer seems to be actually a pretty rare thing. And the green seer, like there's children of the forest. And then there's green seers, which are like the priest of the children of the forest or the wizards. Yeah, the shaman, the shaman. Yep, exactly. Yeah. A lot of people have this belief that Bran can warg a dragon. I think it might be hard to warg a dragon, but Jojen does tell Bran the greatest green seers could wear the skins of any beast that flies, swims, or crawls, and they could look through the eyes of the weirwoods and see the truth that lies beneath the world. So Bran can see the future, Bran can see the past, Bran has access to, like the weirwoods are these like journals of the children everything they ever knew their spirits their songs their spells everything goes into these trees and these trees become like a archive or a matter of record of everything but so he has access to that but it also says he can wear the skin of any beast that flies so that makes me feel like ice brandon is a very possible possibility yeah, I, I've always wondered about that. I know a lot of people have that theory and would like to see it happen. And it would be cool, honestly, to see him warg a dragon. But I don't know if he needs to. Uh, you know what I mean? I've always taken the, the you you know, you'll never walk again, but you will fly. I've always taken that as like flying through time or whatever. Or the uh, ravens. Or the ravens themselves and, and stuff like that. Yeah, but, I, you know, we just don't know. Again, we don't know the, we don't know the rules. I mean, dragons are living, eating creatures who have to eat and hunt and everything else um but they are they do seem to have a magical property um obviously uh being fire made flesh i mean you know a, a regular frog can't can't fucking <laughs> breathe fire uh, so, yeah i mean they seem to be magical so we don't know how that works you know we just don't know the rules there like can he if he even if he was powerful enough can he warg a dragon and what i was saying about they don't need to at least in the show we'll see how it turns out in the books you know, we got a big surprise with the Night King being the second dragon rider. You know, everybody was all about the dragon riders. Like, who is it going to be John and Tyrion, uh, you know, with Danny? But, you know, Danny seems to, you know, it's almost like the, the blood bond that she has controls them anyway. Yeah. So well, you need somebody to, like, take control of, say, Rhaegal, for example, while she's on Drogon just to, I mean, sure, I guess it could help, right? If, if you're in a big battle with the, the White Walkers, maybe it helps to, to, strategically take him in a different location or something i don't know it's, it's hard to say it would help if he could take viserion <laughs> that would yeah, that, yeah that would be a big help yeah <laughs> that, no, that would help be. yeah so i was talking about this with lml and quinn and um i think we were all kind of on the same page that a living dragon like drogon and Rhaegal would be a little bit it would like fry his brain to try to do that and probably the most he could do is make the dragon crash or make the dragon go crazy and i thought that the the white walker dragon i think it's a white walker dragon is um, yeah yeah the the oh here we go here here's the uh, <laughs> apparently we had this big debate the other week um kevin's channel but no yeah i, I see what you're saying 
but yeah, I mean, it goes back to this to the same kind of argument there, right? Is it a, is how does that work? Can he? I mean, we know him and the Night King are connected in the show, so there's certainly a possibility that if he's connected with the Night King, that tells me they're both like going back to the Weirwood thing. They're both tapped into Weirwood.net, which is one of my yeah. reasons I always say he was a proto Stark. Yeah, um, I I definitely think that the Night King. I think the Night King is a Green Seer. Or he has the uh, he has the he has the ability to come into Brand's dream or Brand's weirwood vision and affect it. So he has to have access to the weirwoods. Yeah, and right. So either he had the uh, the blood or the the gift before he was turned, or he uh, received that gift as a side effect. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So I could definitely see like um, I actually feel like that Bran and the Night King are going to have like this battle of the minds type of thing where they're they're fighting warg style not like not yeah. like fighting um beast to beast or anything like that but actually fighting within the weirwood like no i I've, I've actually had the same idea i've said it on a couple of videos and live streams too that i think that it, you know, in the show, at least we've seen Bran, you know, he he flies and, and the Ravens and kind of spies on the Night King. Mm -hmm. And every single time that he comes across him, the Night King looks up at the Ravens and he kind of jumps out of it. Right. He jumps out of warg mode. Yeah. And it's like, uh, you know, at some point he's going to resist that and not jump out. I mean, is he is he leaving on purpose? Is he pushing him out? Is it scaring him? So he just kind of leaps out of it or whatever. At some point, he's got to stay and kind of directly be involved with this war. Yeah, and I think Bran probably knows at this point he has to know that the Night King is tapped into the same thing. They're like they're both drawing from the same source of magic. So Right. They they both can affect each other. And just as Bran could affect the Night King, the Night King could affect Bran. And Bran isn't that powerful right now because Bran hasn't been drinking blood. His last blood cocktail was um, <laughs> from Benjamin, and Benjamin's been gone for a while. Right, that's, that's true. And that makes you wonder what he's, uh, if he's going to, at least in the show, will they will they go back to that? Like, does he, because I've said, I don't know if you've watched any of my live stream, but I've said, and, had several questions about it uh, in in the in the Dragon Race by Wolf series uh, I was talking about with the end game stuff. You know, I think Bran may need, and it may tie into the Isle of Faces, which is one of my theories where this thing ends. Um, does he need some kind of power up? You know, will there be some? Because I, I just can't see Bran being just the messenger the whole time. You know what I mean? Yeah. So something, whether that's John special blood or whatever it's got to be, may be. You know, there may be something where Bran has to get. Uh, I keep, I'm picturing some kind of fucking video game where you level up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But where he gets some kind of boost to do something for the end game, as far as you know, the Night King and the fight. So he's like on level 50, and then he gets this mushroom, and he goes, exactly, <laughs> and he, exactly. He goes when up you, when, to level 100. When you edit this, play that mushroom sound from Mario. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm thinking about. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That. But, but I agree, though. I do agree. I feel like um, I feel like a lot of what Bran is going to be doing is the mess is being a messenger. But I do feel like it's going to come down to Bran versus the Night King. Let's go. Battle of the Minds. Like one warg will come out on top. And I, I think like. Bran has the potential to become the villain because I agree with you about the burn them all, as in burn all the weirwoods. Like yes, if you yes. kill all the magic, then the Night King has to die because there's no more source for his magic to draw from. Right, it, that, and that kind of ties into my end game exactly what happens on the Isle of Faces. And and yes, going back to what you were saying about the Battle of the Minds, I had an idea, and it's just an idea, not necessarily a theory, but we were talking about. Um, in in my series about the end game like okay what what is brand going to do to take part in this is he going to warg a dragon you know is he going to have some kind of power up like we're saying he's going to level up with a mushroom um but what if uh it kind of ties into another theory about what the night king's after now and he ends up like and you have to remove the dragon glass because i think if you've seen anything on my channel you know i don't believe that dragon glass or valyrian steel will affect him because he already has essentially, like you said, uh, dragon glass in his chest, which is a fire element, right? Yeah. So what if Bran has to, like, I don't think anybody could go to him and physically hold the Night King down. 
But what if he can do that in a vision so somebody can take that damn thing out? You know what yeah. I mean? That would be a possibility that what, what Brand would have to get directly involved and have that kind of battle of where would dot net. Yeah, like mess with his mind. Yeah, exactly. Like like hold him down in a sense where physically somebody else can go up to him while he's, you know, in this kind of state of whatever going on with brand in wherewood.net or through the vision. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think um, in order to remove that glass, though, from well, in the show, it's kind of different because like in the books, when you get around the the White Walkers, like it's so cold, you can barely breathe. Yes, exactly. So it would probably have to be someone that what if John is immune to ice like Daenerys is immune to fire or she's not really immune to fire, but Hot, yeah, highly, I mean, that, it, highly it, tolerant of fire. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, it seems to be, you know, uh, this is certainly possible. Um, you know, in the books, we got the whole thing that Catelyn describes Ned walking around naked in Winterfell, completely comfortable, and she's freezing her ass off because it's you know, <laughs> yeah. in the south. And, you know, it's indicated, I mean, something is special about his blood. It can't just be that he's just some bastard who who's really the king or the rightful king in, as far as the line of succession just because there's got to well, be a magical element to his blood we talked the other night a little bit before we um while we were talking about what we wanted to record and we were talking about the ward king yes yes and, absolutely and the ward king is this this guy that became aligned with the children of the forest he had the children of the forest for allies wargs skin changers and the starks overthrew him and took his daughters and it's your belief that that's how the green sight trait or warg trait be got in the stark's blood yeah i actually did a video a couple years ago one of my older cringier videos <laughs> that uh that's how i, I think that, you know that story's in a, in a world of ice and fire and i think the reason it's in there um is a backstory uh, of this battle for sea dragon point was simply to point out that that's where the first men that would become the Starks or the Starks themselves actually at that point being a group of first men actually got the DNA to become wargs at some point. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, taking their daughters who already had that children DNA where they had had some uh, relationships in the past or whatever and then passed on that magical first men or I should say magical children DNA, you know, warging ability, green sight, all that stuff. And that's how it got into the Stark bloodline in the first place. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that's very possible. I speculated on that. I also thought that one of the daughters, when Bran has that um, weirwood dream or weirwood vision, and he sees that pregnant lady. Yeah, the one that won't say, uh, yeah, she's asking about, uh, plead, asking the gods to give her a son strong enough to avenge her. Yeah, yeah that could possibly be one of uh, the War King's daughters. But I kind of thought that those visions were like in order from future to past so i kind of thought that was maybe too early for um it to be one of their daughters but it it could be yeah i think it could be yeah because it's not you know you're seeing it is definitely what you're saying it's going from present to past but by the just by the tree shrinking so yeah it, there's really but the timelines are, are really sketchy so i think oh it's my God. could be the timelines haunt my life because yes, they yeah. make it, they don't make any sense. No, they're all fucked up. <laughs> and yeah. and I think George does that on purpose. Shout out to George R. R. Martin. That was a genius move to do that. Yeah, we can't, a, he's a troll. He's a troll. He's a definitely a troll. massive troll. <laughs> so the old gods have been in in play in the very beginning, and they will be in play, and they will have a big part in the ending, and. The reason I say that the old gods have had a play or have been in play since the very beginning is because the old gods or someone sent the direwolf puppies to the Starks. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we know who that is. And we know essentially kind of what we opened this up with, at least I did, about uh, my idea. And I'm sure a lot of other people's too. Um, I, I believe you agree with this, that there are no actual you know, some kind of sky gods or, or actual separate gods of the streams and the rocks and trees that they are green seers, in fact. And and not to say that the children in their own society didn't believe, you know, in, in gods because they didn't understand the power these other children green seers had. But uh, we know from the story now that the old gods are Blood Raven and Bran, essentially. And um, 
definitely Blood Raven has an interest in Bran and, and Jon Snow both. And so I believe Blood Raven sent the direwolf pups. And the direwolf pups foreshadow the Stark's fate. And we will pick this up on Smoke Screen's channel. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the Sweet Summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children, have a good day. Shame. 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 Shame.